right, the first order of business, as usual, um, are there any more additions to the to the agenda? It's the addition um, of the guidance counselor. Okay, so we need to move on to approve the minutes um, of our last meeting. Are there any additions or comments about it? Moves to approve the agenda of the March 9th meeting. Uh, the minutes. The minutes. Uh, any conversation about it? If there is none, um, all those in favor of approving the minutes from March 9th, indicate by saying aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Abstentions? All right, we have approved the minutes. Um, there are any public comment? Do we have anybody from the public on? No? Okay. Um, then um, the principal's report. Hey, Amy. Yeah. Are you going to do a roll count or anything? Good. Um, I'm not on. Oh. And I'm on the phone. It's Andrew. Hi, Andrew. Hi. So do we need to just go one by one? I don't know. Are you, can you see everything? We've got, uh, I, can, I can tell you who's here. Um, so Tammy's taking notes. Mr. McNeil, Mike, David, Chris, Brett, Amy, Andrew, and then um, a couple of numbers I don't recognize. Oh, uh, David, yeah, I mentioned David. Who else is on the phone? Steve Freyhoffner. Oh, Steve, right, 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 of course. <laughs> and I'm on the phone under 7 now. Tammy? Yes. Okay. All right. Oh, and I, if Steve Freyhoffner here, I'd like to uh, add just an update about the uh, uh, mechanics of the bond uh, vote, the proposed bond vote for next November. Okay. That's a new. Um at the end? Uh, sure, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so, David, how are you? I'm well, thank you. How are you? <laughs> you, look really, you look really weird. <laughs> I'll just say. Well, are you saying me personally or everybody? Oh, everyone has a kind of blur to them. <laughs> Hey, so Audrey just emailed us um, and asked if she, she never got an invitation to the meeting and she asked if she could join. Of course. I, I think perhaps, I don't, I'm not really sure how it works, do we need to send her an invitation so she can. Can we do that? I just saw that come in. Is Adam hosting? Adam, Adam do you want correct. me to forward the email you sent me? I'm, I'm right there. Oh, no, I just need Audrey's last name. I forgot. Grant. 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 All right, done. Great, thank you. So, so David, do you want to give us an update? Um, sure. Um, well, weird bats have transferred disease to humans. <laughs> um, yeah, as I said in my principal's report, uh, it's hard to describe how difficult this has all been. It's been really, really difficult. Um, but I am clinging to a silver lining that I believe in... Uh, the opportunity for us is that maybe we won't ever return to, <laughs> to, what, to what we have always known as school the way it's been for the last hundred and some odd years. <laughs> and I'm really quite serious about that. That's really truly my hope that we will um, learn something in this process about the need for personalization 
and how important it is that we really rethink what we're doing in education. And I really do believe that opportunity is there. I'm hoping that when we come back from vacation, people will have settled into this new reality a little bit. Um, I'm still getting up every morning and pinching myself and trying to convince myself that this hasn't all been a big, bad dream. But uh, <laughs> day after day, I've proven wrong. Um, <laughs> So, um, you know, staff have been great, uh, kids have been great, families have been beside themselves, um, and it's hard, it's really hard, but um, I think if we, if we play it right, whatever that might mean, there, there are opportunities here. Um, I'm finding it to be an incredible time for me personally because I'm, uh, I'm not... Uh, I'm not skilled at this. This is all new for me. It's causing a lot of uh, stress raising, trying to deal with um, reading the, the table here. <laughs> really hard. <laughs> um, but anyways, um, we are about to, uh, we recommended a new director of guidance to you guys tonight, so you have the option to approve that if you want to. And we have an exciting option for our associate principal, and I'm still working with her to try and figure out um, whether or not she's going to take this job or not. Um, it's a tough thing, and I'm not sure that I would be able to commit to a school taking on the associate principal and then the principalship of a school that I'd never been able to visit before. It's a tough thing. So um, keeping my fingers crossed and um, I'll leave it at that. If anyone has any questions for me, I'm more than happy to uh, respond to anything. It's nice to be in my house tonight. The, uh, the traffic wasn't very heavy. <laughs> I was at a Zoom meeting a week ago with people who were putting together stuff for the town of Green for the greater Greensboro area. And one of the comments from one of the participants was that Hazen had been very proactive in preparing students for remote learning. And it was a very good thing for me to hear. Good. We're just winging it, but we're doing the best we can. I know that. And I, I think there's some real um, unspoken heroes in all of this. I mean, these folks that are chasing up, you know, driveways with food packages to give to our kids and the uh, cafeteria people and uh, the people who are volunteering their time to go into child care and all of these folks, I'm, I'm hoping that someday we can throw them a very big party. If you need any additional volunteer that some of the people here would, and I would be among them would be willing to participate and help with any of that as a volunteer. Yeah, thanks Mike, we, we appreciate that. We'll call yeah. on you to find a place for you, but uh, we are also, <laughs> community needs to take care of itself. So. so David, do you get a sense that teachers are thinking about this like you are in terms of what are the opportunities to change the way we do education in light of their experience with this? Um, I think it's too early to tell. I think um, the, the pe people have been fairly resistant to ideas about trying to do anything different in the time um, since the closure and, and up till the vacation. And I think largely that people were really trying to figure things out and, and in a kind of survival mode framework. But I'm, um, I think that when we come back and people have had a chance to have some downtime to realize that we are in this for the next couple of months that we may uh, we may start to see some further conversation that's my hope
Anybody else have any questions for David? Have we thought anything about graduation or how we're going to mark that transition for seniors? Um, we've been thinking a lot about it, but it's pretty hard to think about when you don't have any way to know how or when that might be able to happen. Um, we've promised our seniors that there will be a graduation, that it will be a, not a virtual one, that it will be one that we will have in present. I've told them that it's going to be one hell of a party. And um, I, um, I've also told them that we don't know whether it will be in uh, June, uh, August, or October at this point. But, you know, once we figure out when we can do it and what people's availability is, um, we will definitely plan something. Um, it's something to happen. I, I don't think we're going to try to do any kind of a virtual graduation at this point. Unless we have no other alternative. But I think at this point, largely the sentiment is uh, better, better delayed and have an actual ceremony, which these kids really deserve, um, than to try and do something uh, like pulling 500 people together on a Zoom. Yeah. But anyone who has any ideas about that, um, we, uh, we'd be very grateful. Uh, um, we did love that cake last year. <laughs> well, I was just thinking, we know how to do a cake that people can't get to, so <laughs> social distance and cake. Right. Well, right. we promise wherever it happens, there will be cake. Right, McNeil, are you with me? Absolutely. Okay. 32 we're, inches wide. <laughs> we're, we're, we're just hoping that there will be cake and the ability to eat it too. Right. right. I think Marie Antoinette said something about that. <laughs> Well, all I can say is I, I know um, we had this conversation at the OSSU board, um, David, and um, I probably can speak for everybody on the board and say thank you so much for um, the ways that you pulled it together um, under enormous, yes. um, enormously challenging circumstances. And I don't know if it's any comfort to know that everyone is experiencing this, so it's, you're not the only ones, but... I know when you have, as teachers do, have this sort of sense of commitment and then it all gets sort of thrown up in the air, um, it it really challenges those resources that you have. Um, so thank you for just kind of being there and showing up and, you know, now you know what moments of being at home and contemplation look like. It's what you asked for. Yeah, there, there isn't much contemplation. That's partly what's been so surprising to me. It's hard for me to imagine to be, uh, you know, in front of my computer 12 hours a day and you know, the total lack of contemplation <laughs> uh, just hasn't been there. Uh, it's been really super, super busy. It's incredible. Um, and, uh, you know, I, re I really contrast this a lot with the, the time right, right after Tim's death, when we were also in a really difficult time, but we had our faculties, you know, we, we had our, we could use what we knew how to do. Um, at this time, I, I just feel like I'm at such a loss because I don't know how to do this. Um, so mm -hmm. it's a... It's, it's frustrating and it's stressful to be really out of um, out of your skill set, if you will. It's just um, and there are these long, frequent pauses in all of these meetings. 
Well, I don't think this is anyone's skill set either, David. I think this whole scenario is just so weird across the board for kids, adults, everybody, because it's just, it's complete antithesis of anything that's normal. So if anything, it's good, it's not in your skill set. Well, I'm going to reiterate, David, um, and, and I will echo what Brett said, is that this is new for all of us and um, certainly a time for some self-compassion and lack of judgment and to know that we as humans are actually, we're built to survive and we find ways of innovating and creating and collaborating and adapting. And so just because it hasn't happened yet, it doesn't mean that it's not going to. Um, so I've only heard great things about what the teachers in this SU have done. And so while you may be harder on yourself than we are, I just, again, want to reiterate that we're very, very grateful um, that at the end of the day, when we can all come back together, hopefully we have learned a lot of good lessons and we'll be able to, to make education even better. Um, so let's hope that when we come out the other end, we do understand what's important at the end of the day and what we have the capacity to do. So with that, um, is it okay if I turn on to Adam to give us his report? Adam? Yep, so, um, yeah, we certainly are looking at this as an opportunity uh, I think there's never been a better opportunity to cultivate learner agency with kids at home and on their own and self-directed. Um, and with that in mind, we drafted a continuity of learning plan that was required by the state. Uh, all SUs were required to submit them uh, by last week. So uh, we submitted ours and I shared it with the staff on Wednesday and asked principals to review it after the break um, so that uh, teachers kind of have it on the front burner. We've, um, you know, we, we're trying very carefully not to overwhelm teachers. So we're looking at this more as, um, as a model that by the end of the year might, you know, parts of which might be in place, parts not, but it certainly goes beyond remote learning. Um, so there's this idea that we've already started pieces of this. Now we're adjusting it for, uh, this this unusual circumstance we find ourselves in. But once we're back at school, we can continue with pieces because it's about personalization, it's about flexible pathways, it's about um, personalized learning processes. Uh, so all of that is in there, yet, um, you know, there's not a lot to it. It's uh, probably about an 18 page document with the appendices and the, the pieces that apply to teachers are really only three or four pages long. So it's a kind of a quick, um, check uh, there's a rubric on there a teacher rubric so just like the kids you know you've got approaching and meeting uh, proficiency and it's broken up into different sections i think about eight different indicators um, and it's basically like i said the stuff that we're we've already started to do and now that we're in this situation we're going to pursue in a little different way um David alluded to the meals so we've got um, we started off serving meals on a daily basis at three different stations, uh, Hazen Union, Hardwick Elementary, and Craftsbury Academy. And um, uh, in addition to that, we've been delivering meals. Uh, I think about 400 families are participating at this point. And then the second week, we, um, we scaled it back to three days a week. So we deliver Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And this break, uh, we're not delivering, but we provided families with some opportunities, some alternatives like Lamoille North um, has some pickup places and there are some others as well. We're providing ch child care to between maybe six and, and ten students. Um, Kaylee Galloway kane is, is coordinating that, our, our REACH coordinator. She's doing a uh, stupendous job 
a superb job of that. Um, and that's something we'll either keep going or not, depending on um, capacity and interest. If, uh, if we fall below four students, then we'll um, pull the plug on that. Um, what was the other thing I was going to mention? Meals, child care, continuity of learning plan. There was another thing, but I've forgotten for now. Any questions? Could, could we get a copy of the continuity of learning plan? Sure. Yeah. Um, just also so that everybody understands, um, Adam mentioned that the food service was um, scaled back to three days a week. That's uh, just three days of delivery, not three days um, of meals. It's, it's still five days of meals, uh, breakfast and lunch every day for all of those kids. Yep. Oh, the other thing was um, David mentioned um, graduation. So we're, we're going to get guidance um, by May 8th, we're told, on um, what's happening with the end of the year. So, you know, there's still a question, potentially um, family uh, students could go back to school. I highly doubt it at this point, and a lot of my, co most, most of my colleagues do as well, but uh, we'll certainly get guidance on what we can do around, um, you know, large group gatherings like graduation, and that should come prior to May 8th. That was the other thing I was gonna say, there's been a flood of guidance. I get it daily, um, Saturdays and Sundays included, from the uh, state, from the Secretary of Education, um, who sends out this, this email with all of these links and it gets bigger and longer every every day and then there there are dates next to each one and then all the updated ones say update capital you know and then the, that particular date and then you have to go in there and sift through the original notice to find the update um so and then of course they apply to different people the financial stuff you know john is looking at special education heather is looking at curricular stuff amy's looking at um so it certainly is like um, drinking from a fire hose at this point. It was it was a little more hectic the first couple of weeks, um, I think, as David will attest to. But it settled down a bit. But this, um, like David said, it, it's unprecedented. So the, the agency is trying to, you know, fill all the gaps. And as questions come up um, from people in the field, they go the the agency of education goes back and tries to adjust their plan. Um, because they hadn't anticipated something. So it's uh, kind of a back and forth dynamic that's ongoing. Um, Adam, do you want to talk about any of the financial issues that have, have cropped up or potential? Yeah, we, um, the state uh, sponsored a, a webinar, actually it was a Vermont, uh, superintendents association uh, but there was a state uh, financial uh, manager there and uh, who broke it up in FY20 and FY21. FY20 it looks like um, there there was an anticipated I think it was uh, 36 million in this um, reserve fund that would have been carried forward in FY21. And now there's a $39 million deficit. Um, in addition to that, businesses have been uh, given waivers to submit their taxes to the state until the end of June. Um, so all of this adds up to um, money that we that school districts won't see potentially. There are federal dollars on the way, but the application process is a multi-month process. Um, so, so we're hoping well, the state thought we, we districts would be able to get through FY20, um, but 21 uh, presents a whole another problem. Um, it's much tougher to see the issues, uh, their, their tax imp implications, you know, on all sorts of levels, you know, um, meals and, and, uh, and um, homestead taxes and, um, there's just a sense that districts will be borrowing a lot of money than they have in the past. Um, at the end of this webinar, they, they kind of hinted at um, 
our major uh, expenditures, you know, 80 to 90 percent are personnel. So, um, and they said that a lot of districts haven't, you know, gone through negotiations yet. Um, so that's a potential area of savings. The the only one really we really have control over at this point. Great, thank you. Anybody have any questions or comments? If not, um, the next thing on the agenda is an SU board report out. Who do you want to do that? Um, I would if I had uh, access to the minutes. <clears throat> Fortunately, uh, you all have access to the minutes, and you especially have access to the chair of the OSSU board. <laughs> um, and I, I guess I would, Amy, uh, defer to you to explain to those who haven't had a chance to uh, check out those minutes uh, to brief the board. Um, it seems like so many meetings ago. I, um, I'm not sure, you know, we obviously talked about sort of the state of, of where we are. Um, oh, what was really interesting, actually, is the conversations that's been coming out of the OSWED um, meetings about the their buildings. And one of the conversations is about um, whether they want to put the sixth grade up into the middle school, um, which obviously will impact us. And no decision has been made. But I think it would probably behoove some of us to um, be aware that that's that conversation is happening and um, we probably need to be um, at least on the listening side of of that to make sure that decisions are not made that are going to impact obviously all of um, us at Hazen um, without some input. Um, David, has anyone have a conversation with you about that? Um, no, the only thing I was aware of was that they were, I thought they were thinking about consolidating all the sixth grade up at Lakeview or something. Right. That's also that a prior. question. Right. Um, and I think, I don't think that there's been any decision made at all, but people are really floating the idea of getting the sixth graders out of the elementary school proper, um, whether it would become part of Hazen or whether it would stay part of the elementary school, I guess, is um, something to be discussed and will have huge implications, I think, one way or the other, but some bigger ones for us if they decide they want to um, move them into a middle school kind of setting. And I don't know who would be responsible for that. So sort of stay tuned. And if you hear thoughts and people said that this decision has been made, it has not been made. It's just one of the conversations that have come up in the OSWED um, conversations. Uh, Amy, could you talk about what? why the rationale behind moving the sixth grade to Hazen, what the rationale behind that? Well, I don't know if it was so much, um, I think that people were thinking about the sort of middle school model and that they felt like the sixth grade, for a lot of reasons, it made sense to move the sixth grade out of the elementary school um, just developmentally and the way um, the No Child Left Behind, that kind of stuff was was configured that it was usually a K through five and then six and up kind of thing. And that um, the teachers, and this was coming from the teachers as well, is that they felt that maybe it would make sense to think of sixth graders more as part of a middle school framework as opposed to an elementary school. The conversation obviously is what you know, to do with the buildings. And so the opportunity to create a sixth grade academy where sixth graders would be separate from everybody else was also talked about. But, you know, there may be some pros and cons of that. But I think that's my understanding of where it's coming from. But Great. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Amy. <laughs> Any other comments, Steve? Can you remember anything else that came out of that? Uh, no, that that was. Uh, I think what you just spoke about was the center of gravity at the meeting. Okay.
Um, David, do you have any thoughts about that? Um, so there's a part of me that feels like that, that might be a really good idea if we, if we did it well. Um, I mean, I, I think that um, right now there's a little bit of a wonkiness that happens between the sixth and seventh grade when most students come up to Hazen and um, to be able to have more of a sort of full circle middle school approach where they are acclimating to the same culture at a slightly different time. Um, I could see that as uh, possibly being really useful. Um, so um, I, well, I'm definitely open to thinking about it. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm wondering what they're thinking about as a, as what, what's the goal for the time for, for making this change? What are they thinking about for the time? You know, I honestly don't know. They're looking um, for uh, the year after this next one, and they're um, holding their next meeting on the 20th. They're still uh, accepting proposals from the community. Uh, so there are a number of different configurations on the table, I think. So, Adam, do you think that a decision like this um, should it also include the folks, the middle school folks at Hazen? Like I, like it's, it's I think it, yeah, certainly if they're, if they're leaning toward that, my understanding is they're, they're really nowhere near a, um, a, a definite decision. Um, there are several models on the table and I think the sixth grade academy is one of them. Mm -hmm. But certainly if they, you know, begin leaning toward that, I, I would, I would imagine that a conversation would be opened up for the high school. Well, I guess my question is, there are all these, you know, all these proposals and that before they can actually even make a decision about a proposal, it would seem to me before they get too far down the road that a discussion needs to be made, you know, with the, the staff and faculty at Hazen um, to really talk about the feasibility. So when, I, when Catherine talked to me about it, I thought, well, you know, it has financial implications both for the elementary district, but also for us, at least for us, we are being students. That's good for us, but it's not good if it's gonna overwhelm the system. We're also looking at a building reconfiguration and everything else. Um, the other thing that was really clear to me in their conversations and the kinds of questions that they asked was that they know very little about what goes on in the seventh and eighth grade. So the people who are you know, dead set against it have this image of Hazen that's really, and what happens in seventh and eighth grade that isn't all that accurate. So um, it just seems to me, if it's gonna be a serious consideration, it, it would be helpful to go to the source um, sooner than later. David, you want to jump in? I'm sorry, did someone did someone ask me something? I just thought that you, you D came up in the middle and I thought, did you want to say something? Oh, um, yeah, everything's on a delay right now. And, and uh, um, so I was just going to add the, um, my former school in, uh, in Vermont, just after I left, went to uh, it was a seven through twelve model, and they had an elementary school in the town that was K through six, and they transferred the sixth graders up there. Um, and um, I I wasn't around when that happened, but you know there are certainly people who have done that that we could look into and and you know find out how that went. Um, so. Um, I mean, I think there's lots of reasons to be against it, but I wouldn't, I would caution people to be against it uh, based on what they don't know about what happens in our middle school. Um, you know, and, and in some ways, if we had a larger staff and more resources there, we might be able to have a much more substantial middle school than we, we do now. Mm -hmm. um, um, so, um, 
Yeah, I, this is the this is the first I've heard of it though, which I think is interesting, right? I mean, if they're gonna right. they can throw this around, they, they gotta involve some people in the conversation. Right. I guess along those lines too, it seems to me this is also a, an app time. If we're if this is gonna proceed this way, to have a lot more parent involvement too. It seems to me that if the sixth grade is moved up to Hazen hopefully the parents will not be notified at the last minute that there'll be a long period of time to support Absolutely. that transition mm -hmm. as well too but we don't mm -hmm. want this to also backfire on the school either right uh, so so when, when we talk about the they i heard the they they this and they will decide and like who's the they that's going to decide because they can't decide without people at this table Right. I mean, we have the superintendent, we have the, the board chair, you know, clearly they have them all for this group. Um, Adam, do you want to address that or? Yeah, again, um, the discussions are in preliminary stages and there certainly haven't been any decisions made regarding one type of model or another. Sounds like they're really just exploring a range of options at this point. Well, and it's in the context of the, of the OSWED um, board having to make some decisions about Woodbury, Lakeview, and, and Hardwick Elementary School and what they want to do with the programs and the buildings. It's a huge, it's a huge conversation. But one of the, when they met, the board met actually with the faculty um, at Hardwick, along with parents. I mean, it's been a community groups of community members, but they also met with the faculty at, at Hardwick. My understanding is, is the faculty was very much in favor of really thinking about the sixth grade in a new way. Um, so, you know, ag again, it's, it's well-meaning individuals who are trying to listen to and weigh the community, but I also think that a missing step may be the experts in the middle school um, which is why I'm bringing it up here, because I really want to make sure not that we hijack the, the process at all, but that we're aware and are being used either in a consultant way or a collaborative way to make the best decision for sixth graders in our community. So I'm handing that piece of it over to whoever needs to pick that up. I'm having those conversations with Kathleen from the OSSU board level um, and of which, you know, obviously Andrew and Stephen are there as well. So we, whatever, you know, we know now, I, this is all that I know. I don't have any more information about it or inside information, but I am advising that other people be consulted um, and that you be, so that you're not blindsided either. Okay, okay. Um, the next thing on the agenda, does anyone else have any other questions or comments about OSSU board stuff? And the next thing on the agenda is the fundraising policy. So there's a link there. Um, if you recall at the uh, last OSSU board meeting, um, folks wanted to take this back to their respective boards and take a look at it. Um, if you follow that link, you'll see the document and uh, there have been a, a few comments made from members of other boards uh, just to get people thinking about some things that they might like to see in there. Uh, and, and I'm certainly open to um, adding or, or moving certain things. I think if anything, uh, the comments are, are trying to get a little more specificity. But this is an opportunity for um, Hazen board members to provide feedback on this document. If anyone's interested in providing written feedback, just let me know and I'll give you um, commenting rights to the to the Google Doc. Okay. So if you go if you go into the agenda, just look, you know, click on the link and it comes up. Has the faculty at Hazen had any input into that discussion?
Uh, but I'll let David answer that. I, I don't know. Um, not that I know of. Adam, this is Andrew. Uh, just as I review it, you start off <clears throat> with a lot of references to the principle, uh, shall establish procedure, um, the principle, consultation, the principle has the authority. Um, and then as you get toward the bottom, it refers to administration <clears throat> or administrator. And then at the very end, it says superintendent um, shall adopt a procedure outlining fundraising guidelines. So. It, that, that's you know maybe maybe it's clear in that in the world of admin and education, but um, is this the principal who's sort of in charge of this, or an administrator in the school, or the superintendent? Yeah, I can clarify that. So um, I think we definitely want to um, often with fundraising, it can get out of hand, and there can be different organizations both that exists within the school and outside the school um, that in their efforts to, to do right by kids and, and, um, and their learning, you know, try and um, raise money by unconventional or even in some cases unlawful ways. So the idea is that the principal or the building administrator is really the point person. Everything gets filtered through uh, him or her. The um, reference to the superintendent at the end is a reference you'll see in most, if not all, um, school policy because it's up to the superintendent to either him or herself uh, establish procedures that align with the policy or, or um, designate someone to establish those procedures. So ad administration here, that's within the school? Yes, that would be a yeah. based administration. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Thanks. Yeah. And I and that's something we might want to clean up, Andrew, if it's uh, if it's unclear. And it, it certainly sounds like it would be if it references two different terms for the same individual. So at this point, what we need to do is we need to review it and um, put it on the agenda next month for um, being passed, or approved or not approved. Is that what you're asking of us, Adam? So uh, yeah, the idea was to come back to the. Uh, am I muted? Oh, the idea was to um, come back to the OSS meeting, uh, OSSU meeting, and um, and vote or sorry, uh, uh, talk about, you know, any changes wanted by individual boards and, and um, either appoint someone to uh, make those changes. I mean, we can go through it and you can let me know which changes you want to see and I can, I can then make those changes if you'd like. Okay, so this is an OSSU policy, not an, an individual Hazen policy, correct? That's correct. Okay, all right. So I guess the request is, and I'm making this request both as the convener of this meeting, but also as the OSSU board, please take a look at it. Send your comments to Adam if you want some changes, because ultimately at the OSSU board, we will approve it. And like I said, if you want, you could just uh, let me know. I think the easiest way, um, someone had sent me comments in an email, and I just gave her rights to the document, and she put all her comments in there, and it's much easier for anyone really to go in and see the text she's referring to and then the comment or things that you want to add. So I'm, I'm very happy to, you know, give you commenting rights um, if, if you would like to see some changes. And then everyone at the OSSU board meeting can look at those and, and make that collective decision. So is there already one document with comments on it that we could have access to? Oh, sorry. I think since you don't have commenting rights, you probably can't see them. So I'm going to change that right now. Um, let's 
Okay, I guess if you refresh your um, your browser, you should be able to see the comment. Okay, they're in there. And, and you have the ability to make them as well now. Okay. All right, everybody, comment away. Um, next on the agenda is the consent agenda to prove the monthly financials. Um, the narrative with budget adjustments, approved vouchers, the attached list, and the treasurer's report. Do we actually have one? I think I remember seeing a uh, month, Steve Fry Hoffman speaking. I, I think I remember seeing a monthly treasurer's yes, report. Tax law, Asian Union, treasurer's report. Yeah. Called oh, Jan Cash Flow. Yeah. All right. Anybody have any questions? How do we approve the vouchers? <laughs> um, well, I, um, yeah, so I misspoke about the OSSU. Is it the same for the, um, for each board, Adam? Because I'm approving them. Yeah, it should be the same. Um, what was it? The uh, the um, board uh, officers, I think, need to go in and, and just uh, send. Was it um, Sonia? Uh, Sonia. Email? Yeah. So what I've been doing is um, reviewing them, downloading the front page, the signature page. I've been signing it and then scanning it and sending it back to her. What she really needs from everyone else is just that you've looked at them, she sent them out, um, and that you, on an email, just say that you approve them. And then we will do a big signing ceremony when we all get together. Maybe a graduation, who knows? But um, we'll all get together and s sign them. But in the meantime, as the clerk, I've been looking at them and going over them and doing what I normally do. And then I just um, scan it back to her assigned version until she has it. So if you would just sort of take a look at them, they came out today, the more recent ones came out okay. today. Um, I don't think I've seen them, so I don't know if um, that sent out. I don't, I, yeah, I haven't seen it yet. Not, um, I got it this morning. So maybe it's just okay. me that's looking at them and then everyone else will look at them later so on. There's a folder that's called vouchers right next to the um, folder for this meeting. That's where you'll find it. Do you see that? Yes. Each each uh, month we'll have a folder named vouchers and you can just go, go in and they're all there. And then we just return uh, indication that we've looked at them or? And yeah. then how do we respond to that? That you approve them. And then, uh, like Amy said, there'll be a signing ceremony. But you just need to approve them. Um, okay. Any idea what that All right, is that clear for everybody? As much. Mike, what's your question? I have no idea. I, I'm I'm sorry. I can handset type, I can make paper, but this technology is a little farther advanced. Well let me know what you're having trouble with. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
yeah, whatever. <laughs> I'll, I'll call somebody, um, try to get some advice on it the next day. All right. Okay. Do you have access to the board folder? Yeah, I see a board folder over here. Okay. What's the name of it? The name of it? I, no, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I'm happy I'll, I'll to you if you want to. There's no reason to take up everybody's time with That's okay. my Let tech portfolio. Why don't you email me and we can set up a time to just take a look in there. I can call you. <laughs> okay. I, I may need to get my techie wife down to help uh, right. explain, help translate. Right. Just shoot me an email. What? Just shoot me an email when you're ready. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So, so this is the upside of this virus. Those of us who have been a little reluctant to do technology are now being forced to learn how to do it. Uh, nah, that's going to be pretty tough on you folks. <laughs> well, that, that may be an upside. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it depends on your perspective, but it is an opportunity, Mike. Exactly. There are different perspectives on this. <laughs> um, all right. Do I have a, anybody willing to uh, make a motion that we accept the consent? <laughs> Agenda, what is it called? The con yeah, the consent agenda. Consent agenda. So moved. All right. Um, is everyone off mute? Mute, mute. Second. I'll second that motion. All right. Any you discussion? Have... I'm hearing none. Um, all those in favor, say aye. At aye. One. Aye. 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 All those opposed? Abstentions? All right. We're, it should we're be. Good. Um, I'm sorry, who made the motion? Was it Chris or Andrew? Steve Freyhoff. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that wasn't the choices. Three for three. <laughs> <laughs> so I was doing my Andrew Meyer imitation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so the, the two agenda items. Um, one was the we have to go into um, executive four. No, one is the, um, the added uh, additional item of the the uh, guidance counselor. Right. And what uh, was the other one? There's, I think there was just that one, as far as I I remember. Right. And yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and the uh, bond, uh, if we could just take a oh, right. um, Do you want to just talk about the bond first? Do we have to go into executive for the guidance council? Nope. Okay, then never mind. For information's in there, if you want to review your resume, you, you can. All right. So Where is it? Where's the information? It's in the uh, in tonight's board folder. So do you want to talk about that first? David, do you want David to bring bring that here? Sure. Yep, David, uh, you want to talk about the guidance counselor? Sure. Um, we um, we found a woman who has quite experience in being our director of guidance. Um, she has many years of experience. Um, most recently, she was at uh, Linden Institute, um, and. The community really liked her a lot. Uh, I spent quite a bit of time chatting with her. Her uh, references were really strong. And uh, she's really excited about coming to Hayes. And I think she's, um, she's got a good grasp of our demographic. Uh, she grew up in Vermont in uh, less than stellar conditions herself. And uh, I think understands uh, kids who've... Uh, had some hard knocks in their lives, as well as uh, a range of other kids. She has three kids of her own, um, and she lives in Danville, and uh, she's very excited to be on board. Um, and I guess the only other thing I'll add is that um, we were really quite pleased 
given what we have seen other people doing, trying to find guidance counselors over the last year, there's been several places that have left positions unfilled because they were having a hard time finding people. And uh, we had several strong candidates and we ended up interviewing uh, three and two of them were, were very strong and very experienced. So I felt like we, uh, we had good options. Over and out. Great. <laughs> <laughs> so, Adam, is there anything that we need to do? Um, not really. Just uh, give your blessing. And um, I spoke with her today as well, and um, can echo everything David said. Uh, definitely have the sense that she's aligned with where um, Hazen's going, where uh, David's leading Hazen. And um, I, I think uh, I'm excited. I know she is too. I, I called her back today to offer the position, told her that the, the board meeting was tonight. Great. All right. Thank you. Well, that's a relief. Yeah. Um, and Steve, do you want to talk about the uh, bond? Yeah, uh, very briefly, and this is really something for uh, next meeting. Um, I wonder, at the next meeting, I'd like to poll the board members individually on their uh, response to the uh, to this scenario. It's next November. Um, there is uh, a very high rate of unemployment in this area. Uh, some businesses uh, are closed not to come back. And the towns are having a difficult time uh, collecting property taxes because people are having a difficult time paying them. So uh, thinking that that is one of the worst case scenarios, uh, I would be interested in, in hearing about what the uh, – board members think uh, we should do about this uh, bond uh, if uh, that is the case, um, if, if that scenario uh, plays out. Uh, and just to uh, ask you to keep in mind that in the final analysis, um, it is the uh, tax uh, payers, the members of the Hazen Union uh, towns that uh, have the final say uh, on what happens here and that there are some uh, improvements that must be made uh, to the school um, to make it uh, habitable at a, a minimum uh, for the uh, people that uh, work and teach and learn there. So for next time, if you can just think of that scenario uh, and come up uh, with how you would handle um, the bond under those uh, circumstances and, and uh, presenting it uh, to the voters. Keeping in mind that, uh, you know, the architects uh, are now really psyched on, on getting this project done, and there's even a meeting next week uh, uh, with the uh, drama and uh, music uh, staff uh, at Hazen, and, and David and I will be talking with the architects to get into the nitty-gritty of the auditorium and the uh, choral and music practice rooms. Um, so those plans will be good to have no matter what. Uh, if they can't be uh, pulled out uh, next November, maybe later. Uh, but there are some things that must be done, and uh, we don't know the financial circumstances uh, of uh, what it's going to be like around here next November. So if you can just think about those, those two things um, so uh, we can have the benefit of your views how to handle that at the next meeting. Um, that would be uh, that would be a good benefit. 
over and out. Yeah, um, let me weigh in on this. Um, when Todd um, corralled Steve and I to come to this meeting with the architects last week, I my first impression was you guys have got to be out of your minds to even be thinking about anything like this at this time. It seemed like so far from in any way realistic, um, which it may still be, but I have to say I got very excited about the conversations with the architects and um, particularly about this new idea that's come up, um, which would be sort of creating a, a space at the opening of the school um, that could be a really welcoming, friendly um, kind of place where people would congregate and um, kind of a community space uh, at the very entrance of the school. Um, I have shared with people that my experience every day standing in the lobby welcoming people in um, is often very brief because people are coming through those doors going somewhere. There, there's no reason for them to stick around. So they just kind of fly by me going this way or going that way. And to create a space that one would come through those doors and perhaps linger in uh, um, to, to be attractive and welcoming to the community, I think is a a tremendously interesting idea. It fits very well with our sense of um, trying to build a strong sense of community in schools. So that was a recent idea that we batted around at the last meeting that um, got me really excited. As well as those extremely posh looking uh, SU uh, headquarters that could be out in the parking lot. Looked pretty cool. Over and out. <laughs> So Steve, if we still don't have a clear picture next month of what the world looks like, um, and I'm not sure, certain that we will for a couple months, a couple, three months, what does that do to a November uh, vote? Well, if things are uncertain, then uh, I think the one possible alternative is to push the bond vote to March. Okay. What was that? I think that was the twilight. 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 <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Oh, I'm sorry for those days in college where I will never mind. <laughs> All right, I'm going to end this madness. I'm going to have enough, enough, I have enough, another, 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 Motion, motion to adjourn. To adjourn. No, 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 AC Carter, AC Carter, AC Carter, AC Carter, AC Carter, AC Carter. Sometimes an actor, like, 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 um, so if someone could make a motion to approve Casey Potter as guidance counselor, that'd be great. So move. All right. Um, is there, there any discussion? Hearing none and no reverberations, thank goodness. Um, <laughs> um, all of those in favor of approving Casey as the guidance director uh, indicate by saying aye. 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 Oh, cool. Well, so I only heard it one time. Um, a public <laughs> um, extensions 
All right. What was that? Why did that happen? That was someone on the phone who eventually hung up. Um, I, I was going to mute them, but I, I felt bad about it. Um, Mike, I, I emailed you a link to that folder, so you might check, uh, and you should be able to see the tonight's folder along with the vouchers. I, I shared it with you. Um, you should get it in your email. Okay. okay. Like I said, I'll find out what that means. Thank you. Okay, you can get back to me. We can go through it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anything else before we um, say goodbye? Future agenda items. Yes, are there future agenda items? Send them to Steve. We had a discussion. We had a fairly lengthy executive session last time, and I don't know whether anything has happened since then. And we may, if things have happened since then, they probably should be discussed in executive session. If they haven't, we need to have at some point some, we need to figure out how to proceed. Right. Um, the other conversation about the request. Right. The request? Okay. So Steve, can you put that on the next agenda? Do we still have Steve? Steve's gone. No, I think he's gone. He's gone. Did the aliens take him? Must have. We can talk about him now. No. Um, let's, make, let's make sure we get that on the next um, agenda item. Um, yeah, Tammy, Tammy will have it in her notes and Taylor will see it there. Okay. Thanks. Great. Anything else? Right. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you. This is thank you. Thank you. Um, Where were the baked goods this time? No baked goods? <laughs> Not the crack. I had <laughs> oh wow! I had I had some of the crack matzo, killer crack matzo. <laughs> Did we have a motion to adjourn during the reverb session? Um, oh yes, I, I think there was. There's a motion to adjourn. Is that okay for everybody? Yeah, second, 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 yeah. second, yeah. second. Um, and the trails. I'll compare the trails. matzo crack on your behalf. <laughs> Killer Matzo Crack. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.